Diesel Super Sport, wet paint, big feet. I pull up and kill shit, six feet. All right, six feet going deep. It's Nictorious with Rome the Prophet. All right, Rome, why don't you tell us about what you do? Uh, I live. I'm a human being. You live? Yeah, I'm, uh, I would identify as a man, you know, mm -hmm. as a philosopher, and just likes to make music, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So you grew up out here in Miami, Florida, right? No, I'm from Pennsylvania, up in the woods, middle of nowhere. Right. Can I curse? Yeah, yeah, you can. I can curse? Yeah. All right, you ever hear of bumblefuck? What is that? You never heard that term? No. That means like middle of nowhere. Uh, like bumblefuck. Like no one knows where it's from. We hear, we say um, BFE, but fuck you, but fuck Egypt. I mean, kind of like that. Like, like, Similar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like bumblefuck. Like nowheresville. No, yeah. Small town. Like there's no there's no industry. There's no money there. Like no one's gonna make their dreams happen there. So I always wanted to come to a bigger city like Miami to like make my dreams come true. You know. So, so you I came, came out here, here by yourself? Yeah, in 2012. I went to the University of Miami. You know, and that was the first time I came out here. That was my dream school when I was like. Eight years old when they were killing shit in football. Oh, yeah. You know, like Sean Taylor, you know, that whole era yeah, of I mean, Miami football. Do you I grow up here? Yeah, well, I, don't, I don't watch football, but. What? Are you serious? Yeah, I was a huge <laughs> fan back then, dude. Like, huge football fan. Like, I wanted a ball at the U. Uh, Seriously, like, that was. So you're playing football? Not, of course not. Look at me. But I'm saying that was my young dream, and that's kind of what inspired me coming to Miami. Oh, my whole okay. shit is life is a dream. Yeah. That's my whole shit. Life is a dream, you know? I'm Rome the Prophet. My real name is Brandon Rome. I'm the prophet of my own destiny. You're Nick the Prophet. Have you ever been to Rome? Yeah, actually. When I went to Europe, I had to go and it was fucking unbelievable. Really? I cried in the streets of Rome. Why? It was just so, I had such a moving experience. You won't, won't hear like the quick yeah, story? Yeah, what, what, was, what was it that made you cry? The moving experience? In the street? Yeah. I was born with bilateral club feet. Like your feet are twisted in. Uh -huh. Like imagine your feet, you walk like this. And then turned in. Uh -huh. Like, you look it up, bilateral club feet. That's what I had. They did surgery on me when I was like hella young and like straightened my feet out. Uh -huh. But I can't like go like this with my foot. So I was never really born to walk. Okay. Really? And yeah, and like, but I learned to walk. Like, when I played football when I was young, I would cry after practice. Like, my feet hurt so bad. And like, my best friend was so fast, like the fastest kid. And uh -huh. I was just like, couldn't run because I wasn't born to run, you know? Yeah. And I was just like, damn. This is, this sucks. And then when at a young age, I was like, my football dreams are not going to happen. You know when you're young, you want to be a sports player? Mm. Did you want to play basketball? Not really. Okay, well, football, no. You know what I'm talking about? Most kids, they want to be a rapper, an actor, or not a yet. sports player. A basketball player, football player. I want player. to be a, a policeman. Really? Yeah. It's cool, like, to do justice, do good things. Yeah. Yeah, well, in any event, like, I want to be a football player like young kids do. And I was like, dude, I wasn't born for it, you know? Like, I wasn't even born to run. And I was like, I gotta have a different dream. And that's when I started to just look at, like, knowledge and, like, life and, like, business and be like, I could probably have a bigger impact anyway. But when I got into the University of Miami and my whole dream of going there, like, I didn't think I'd get in. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a smart kid, but, like, I wouldn't even do my homework. You know, like, I, was, I went to a prep school. I got a scholarship to go to prep school. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't even do my homework, you know, but, like, had... You were doing other stuff? Had ACT and SAT scores to get me in. I just, like, didn't care for, like, academic school. Yeah. But I could perform well enough, like, to get into the U. And I was like, I gotta go. And I told my pops, like, look, I'm not going to get a degree and, like, do what I got with my degree. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, like, be there and, like, live out the dream, you know? Mm -hmm. And I almost dropped out of you because I was like, I do not need this shit. And the fact that I got a philosophy degree, like, what the hell did you do with a philosophy degree? Teach, write, fuck out of here. You don't want to do that? You don't want to be a teacher? I am, through my music. That's the point. I mean, like, in, like in the school. Yeah, maybe when I'm, like, 80, dude, and, uh -huh. like, hella rich, and, like, bored, and I want to teach, like, the youth. I don't want to read papers, though, and, like, I want to expand my own knowledge and try to encode it through the music and, like, the message. And that's the whole message, like... So what's, like, some philosophy stuff that you learned? Like, you, like, academically or, like, extracurricularly, like, in my own time? Um, what do you put in your music? Like, what, what, my whole life philosophy is my music, basically. Mm. Like, life is a dream, believe in your dreams. And, uh, basically, like, every song I try to make, like, about a little something. Like, that song changes, like, that we said it's got the bad mix now. Mm. It's about if you, it's about change, you know? And it's about understanding that like steps need to happen for change. Like in the second verse, I talk about like right hand when you step, then the right or like right foot when you step, then the left foot when you step, then the right, put your right hand with the left. And it's just about like going 
and going through the motions of growth, you know? Mm -hmm. I've went through a lot of, uh, like, mental growth and, like, self, like, rebirth of who I am and who I'm gonna be in life, like, in a couple stages of my life. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people do this, but they don't really talk about it, you know? Yeah. And a lot of artists, like, just like a cautionary tale like that I always thought when I was younger like I didn't want to be known as like a name forever like for example like 50 Cent is a boss like I'm 50 is a boss but Curtis Jackson the man is always known as 50 Cent you know what I'm saying mm. you know like an artist name yeah you get what I'm saying everyone's got an artist name like you know like so I was just like damn I don't I don't want to have like a weird artist name that's not me mm. so once I was a freshman at the U and this kid, I was talking some crazy shit about like philosophy. What did you ever think of like conspiracies? Like, like Little Prophet or something? No, no, this is what I'm telling you where Rome the Prophet came from. Uh -huh. I was talking crazy shit about like conspiracies and like all this nuts or shit. Like young 18 year old me, dude, when I was out the U. And my friend was like, You're like a prophet. You're Rome the Prophet. Uh -huh. And I was like, That's, that's it. Because yeah, we're all prophets. I'm not like no Shradamas. Mm -hmm. I might have like an inkling of some things that might happen in the future because I pay attention to life and the cycle of life But we're all prophets of our own destiny and that's the name. It's like It's a more there's a message in the name. So you're like, what's what's a, how does philosophy go into your music? My, my fucking name is my philosophy. That I'm the prophet of my future I captain my ship and everyone I meet I say What's your name? You know, you're Nick, you're Nick the prophet. Believe in your dreams mm -hmm. and understand like even if the waters get murky, you know, you, you captain the ship and you can make it there through the storm. But also realize you only have one trip, you know? So if you're charting your path here, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you're going here and you're like, oh, I actually want to land over here. For example, I want to do this in life, you know? Let's say you all of a sudden, you're like, fuck this interview shit, I want to be a painter. Have you painted in your life? Yeah. Okay, let's say, like, do you like painting? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say, I, I was just a guess. But let's say you're like, fuck this new shit, I want to be a painter. It's like, you had your, your, your ship going in that direction, but you'd have to stop sailing towards interview direction mm -hmm. and sail straight for, like, artist, a painter. Yeah, so, so you can't like, do both. Yeah, exactly. So what you dedicate your time to, you become. And I think in my life, like... But I do do, uh, like, I do paint, and I do a lot of things at the same time. As I, I do no, really. Yeah, we all do. We all grow in a certain way. But what you put the most of your energy into is where you'll grow the most. Mm -hmm. Imagine life like flowers, like flower pots, you know, like all, your art, you know, your social life, your interview thing, and you only have so much of the water, mm -hmm. you know, life energy to dedicate to them and money to dedicate to them and all that. You, it's hard to grow all of them at the same time. You could like water them a little bit, but they're only gonna grow so big versus you just pouring all the water yeah. in one <laughs> beanstalk. But they also die. Huh? The other if ones? If you get a plant too much water, it'll die. It'll, it'll Definitely, die. yeah, that's why you gotta take a break and shit. Like, I record some music in such a weird way, like I'll put a session on and put like song after song after song, like back to back to back, just like mm -hmm. take the beats, put, for your album? No, like when I'm recording. I'll put like 10 beats in a row mm. and go in the studio and just hit record. I obviously got to come out and stop the record and put yeah. the next track on. But I literally like record. If I'm self-recording, record, get out, stop, start, walk in, shut the door, da 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 Just like mm. off the top, freestyling, like whatever. But it's not like a freestyle. I try to like, I try to say like, if the beat could talk, what the hell would it say? Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this for like three years now. Where so you stop? When did you stop writing? Stop writing and start yeah. just going. Yeah. When I start going to real studio in like 2015, and um, it was just hard, dude, because I would look at my writing thing and I would try to like read it, and mm -hmm. it would like stumble and not have like the timing right. And then once I got more comfortable just riding the beat and like just going in off the top, I could like kind of feel what's coming next mm -hmm. and I could ride the melodies better. Like that original take is always the best, mm -hmm. you know? So even if I'll do an original take demo and I'm like stumbling over some words and I want to recut it, like sometimes I'm just like, damn, it's never going to sound like that again. So most of my albums, like my first album were ones where I killed it on the one take, you mm -hmm. know, like all the songs on the album, like were one take and it's like 35 tracks. And you might not hear one word because I don't even know what I said that one word. Mm. But I just went and clicked record. 
and that's one thing about my music. Like, it's really inspired by like. But isn't it hard beat. to like write your lyrics after because you don't really know like what you said? No, no. I, well, when I kill it and like I kill the whole track and I know what I'm saying, hmm. I know exactly what I'm saying. But in 2015, when I was just learning, and I would like stumble, like Kanye does it. Jay-Z does it. It's called scatting, you know? Mm. I, this is really inspired by, like, Jay-Z and, like, Lil Wayne and the way they make music. Like, when, it's kind of different from what Wayne did. And, like, I watched the Carter documentary probably, like, ten times. Mm. You know, he'll go and then he'll think of something. He'll cut it. And then he'll go again and he'll just, like, cut it. My shit is just, like, go in one take. And if I mumble a little bar, maybe I'll just cut that out, that one little, that one little piece out of the audio and just, like, drop it, you know? Mm. Or I'll just... Or I'll just cut it again. But the idea is by just feeling the flow, maybe like the first hook, it's got nothing to do with the last hook. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like this makes the best music, at least for me personally, when I could like feel the beat and like feel the emotion of the track and think like if this beat could talk, what would it say? So like what about your message that you put in your music? What about my message? Yeah, because you told me that you, um, you don't really like the state of music that music's in right now. So you would want to change it. Yeah, well, I just want to promote positivity and like... Um, understanding a lot about like white and black energy and understanding like the consequence of action and the karmic influence of life and our intentions and expectations like so to say that a lot of people like they don't really realize how powerful your intentions and actions are and what they could amount to and uh, just seeing friends like out here for example like I met Ronnie dude when I was in 2013 you know who? Ronnie J. Oh. Like, I met Ronnie in 2013, like, mm -hmm. when I was, like, selling sneakers and all this bullshit. And, like, Jimmy, a freshman year we talked about upstairs. Mm -hmm. And just seeing, like, what these kids have done in this time, like, dedicating their life to their music, like, dreams do come true. And then I looked at my own life, and I was like, damn, I'm really not that much of a failure. Mm -hmm. I wanted to gain knowledge. Yeah. I gained knowledge, you know? I still know nothing about life. Like, life is hard to understand. But I feel like I have more knowledge than other people. Definitely of myself and of how the world works and how pe people work and like energy and the elements and just life. Like I definitely learned a lot. And now I have to take all this knowledge um, and put it into music and put it into a whole message where, uh, you know, you can teach people like, do you feel like how to be the best they could be? Do you feel like you're real? I feel like I'm real as shit. But I mean, like, do you feel like life is real? Like, it does things, or is, are you is life real or is this an imagine, an imaginary thing? Yeah, or like, are you... I have this, I have this, like, weird, uh, weird thought experiment, so to say, mm. like, uh, to prove that things exist, per se, like, if I die, is this all still here? If you die, is this all still here? Mm. You know, like, right now, if that camera was there, you know what I'm saying, and there was, like, a bucket of poison right here, mm. and me and you both drank it, okay, and we both, like, die... That camera's still there, okay? Mm. So life and reality is independent of an individual, okay? Like, even if we weren't here, you know, like... Because how do you know that you're not just memories in a body? Well, I'm, I'm telling you, like, that's my personal proof of the existence of things. Mm. Like, in my, uh, I think, junior or senior year, in my epistemology class, which is, like, the study of knowledge, like, what is knowledge, mm. I wrote... Um, that to have knowledge and to know truth, you have to have personal experience with it. So it's really hard to prove what is true, but you can prove true events. Like there's a phone right here. There's a water bottle right here. Like, I got dreadlocks. Those are like things and mm -hmm. th those are true. But as far as like the universe is this infinite thing and we're spinning in space and like all this, like I don't even know if you can prove that to be true. Like truth is hard to prove. What is really true? Like, are we here? Are we a simulation? What are we? Who created us? What is man? I don't know. But there are some truths that I've realized, like that the humans and the, and the birds and all the mammals, when they're eggs, they look the exact same. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? From sperm into the egg, you know, two eyes, the mouth, like hands and legs. You know, most animals have the same general features. Well, flies have like a thousand eyes. Well, dude, those are like insects. Those are lesser creatures. But the more developed creatures that have some sort of consciousness and some sort of like thought in them and like a brain and heart and body, they, they somewhat resemble each other. So I've just noticed some weird things that like, like, I don't think life is what it seems. And I think life is a lot more beautiful and a lot more of like a, 
undeniable gift and blessing that people really realize and your individual power to change those around you and change this collective life that we all live is much greater than many people realize, you know? And I want people to embrace that power and be the best they could be to make the, the future of this collective world the best it could possibly be, very simply. Mm -hmm. Through figuring out what their passions are, what they're best at, you know, and their personal skills, understanding their flaws and overcoming them, finding people to be around them that help them beat those flaws, and just maximize your, your life, you know, maximize your life energy and your life output and your success. Very simply, you know, it's just a sad world with a lot of people with broken dreams, you know. And a lot, and when the youth, that's really why I want to do this music shit, for real. It's like the youth, dude. Like, I remember when I was like 10, 12, listening to Lil Wayne, dude. And like, T.I., that was like my life, dude. Like, after I knew I was going to be a football player, mm -hmm. I was like, this music shit is for real. You know, and then listen to Tupac, then listen to old 60s and 70s records. I was like, music moves my soul. And then I realized, like, everybody likes music. It's like, yo, I could teach in music if I feel like I'm talented to, like, understand and hear the music. But now it's like bridging the gap. Like I feel like maybe I went too far with the artistry, and that's like with these 35 song albums mm -hmm. that like no one's even listening to. I could put three of them out. And I feel like even my fans, like there's no way any of my fans have heard all my songs. And that and I got like thousands of demos, just a couple hundred I put out. It's like maybe I'm too deep in the artistry and I should consolidate it more to individual songs, like you're saying, or like individual videos, and then like spread the message that way, just because like maybe the books are too long, you know? People yeah. don't have time to read such a long book, you know? No, yeah. When each album's like two hours and 20 minutes. But as far as the artistry goes, like I'm really proud of it. And in the future, I'll look back on it and be like, that was cool. Because it's very inspired by like L Little Wayne's anthology or like Little B's like style of releasing these super long projects. Mm. It's just uh, Charles Hamilton's another inspiration. He's got so much music. like. I just like making music, you know, and it was never about like getting fame or clout. This is about putting stuff out there for it. It was just about putting music out that yeah. would represent me and who I am. And I have so much unreleased shit that I wish I could put out, you know, but I have like too much music at this point. So now it's like, damn, I've pumped the brakes. I'm recording too much. I got too much. What are my best songs to represent me? Where do we go from here? And that's what this next album is to represent like a diverse sound, you know, of, like some R&B, some what's rhythms. It, what's it going to be called? It's called Mysterium Redux, which is like, Mysterium is like Latin word mystery, mm. and Redux, Duco is like to lead, like, um, or a, a deduction is to take away, like de take backwards, you know? Mm. Um, so Duco is like to lead, so it's like, sort of like the mystery understood, or like the mystery backwards, like it could have different translations, mm. but it's basically my, the album is supposed to symbolize that, like I'm finally understanding who I am in life, and mm. what I understand about life and what life, like the grand mystery, I feel like I'm starting to get it. And this album is me saying like, um, just like putting a, a couple little bit of that into the art, you know, it's like. When is, um, what are you dropping it? When's the album come out? Well, mm. shit. Maybe, um, maybe like next Friday, maybe on like Wednesday, maybe another week or two. Mm. I, I, like the old me would just be like, I'm putting it out on this date because I like dates and I like numbers. Yeah. Like my first album came out when I flew to Tennessee and saw the eclipse. Like I saw the solar eclipse with my own eyeballs. Mm. And my first album came out on that day. Didn't use the goggle things? Huh? Didn't use the goggle things? Yeah, like when it's there, but not when, not when it was covered. Oh. It was unbelievable, dude. All the birds were going like beep, 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 mm. like everywhere. Like it was the most insane thing. When I saw that, that like changed my life. My album came out that day. I hit the iTunes charts with the album, dude. I don't know how the hell. I was like, holy shit, I could do this music shit. And then I started to like give up when I realized like people aren't really even listening. I, I should have shot videos. And I put another album out and I did it again. And then I was like, this is all wrong. So it's like, let's do one more album that's like really good. Should we stop talking because of this? Is that loud as shit? No, you can say Out there? We're yeah. good? Yeah, yeah. Even though they're rolling like uh, <laughs> whatever know. the hell they're rolling out there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You feel but, like your album was, is going to be, this is going to be the one? Yeah, like, I, well, I, I feel like the, the, the best song couldn't be unreleased or on my old albums, but I'm really proud of where I'm at on this album and what this album represents, like, mm. sonically. Like, there's rhythms, like, Caribbean vibe, you know, dance hall vibe. There's, like, rap tracks, 808. 
bump yeah. and shit. Like, that's something for everyone. Pretty much. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm really trying to make it really diverse, you know, and like some like summer vibing songs, like some kind of sad emotional songs, like, and I really pour my heart out, like, I, dude, I cried in the booth when I was doing one record. Really? Yeah, like I just started crying, dude, because I really thought about life and I had this like revelation about life, dude, and it, it's a song called Last Year. And when I saw the name last year, like of the beat name, yeah. I was like, yeah, it's my last year, it's my last year. You know, I'm running right out, I'm running past, but like I saw the name and I got a couple, you know, things in my head. Just walked in the booth and started saying it, like, and by the, by the middle of the song, I'm crying. And I was like, this is so ironic. The first words I was saying was, it's my last year, it's my last year. And then I'm crying in like, in like gratitude of like understanding like all my personal pains and like, doubts and like failures and successes and triumphs and like how they've built me up for who I am and like where the future will go it's like damn and when I really looked at life and like just appreciate your life dude and like the power of life because you can do anything and just because you did this for this long doesn't mean you can't do that for the rest of your life no of course and that's really the whole thing like what um what about some like advice that you have for anyone that wants to start out with music right now what do you tell them anyone who wants to start anything start that fucking shit and go hard and in today's world of like creating content and everything like if you want to be a true artist do it like RTB start putting out a shitload of music even if people aren't listening but if you want to blow up maybe you should take the more you know calculated route because people have short attention spans maybe go with the two minute video with crazy editing and a weird image with some dyed dreadlocks and a face tat if that's going to grab people's attention it's really what is your intention do you want to be this do you want to be that and whether you want to be an artist, whether you want to be a businessman, whether you want to be an architect, start doing it. But this is like for you. If, if it's content creation, you interview everybody and anybody. Because the more, the better. The more views, the more your whole thing grows. Like anyone doing anything, you just start going as soon as possible and as hard as possible. But also be very careful not to like, like I said with the ship, yeah, drive right cool. here if you might go there. So yeah. be like cautious. And I think I was a little too cautious. Like, do I really want to sell sneakers and make a sneaker business and like retail store, you know, like round two in, Cal in California, you ever heard of round two? Mm. Yeah, like do, should I do something like that, you know, or should I uh, like write songs for people? Or should I make my own songs? Should I do my own label and like yeah. sign people? And I was like, damn, like if I get business and I'm good at making music and I'm good at philosophy, and like I started writing a book and I'm like, who the hell's even gonna read my book? So it's yeah, like, I maybe I should get this artist thing going and then publish the book and just be like an author, business owner, a human being and a philosopher through my art and own my own assets and then just call it a day and like live my whole dream and inspire others to do the same. No, of course. What about like anyone you wanna shout out? Uh, anybody wanna shout out? Shout out to all my haters, all my fans, my mom, my dad, dude, little Wayne, dude, Tupac. Like, are you kidding me? Like, there's so many people who inspire me to live. Bob Marley, dude, like, everybody, like, life, whatever the hell God is. Da Vinci, dude, like, I just love life, dude. And, like, I want to shout out to nature, dude, and the elements, fire, water, air, earth, dude, everything, dude. The sun, like, life is not what it seems. And I think um, if I really take this sort of sense of like mystery and gratitude into my general life and try to like teach people really to appreciate your life and your individual energy and power i might be able to change the world a little bit and that's my main goal is to change the world for and to be better than when i was born even yeah. if it's a little bit and i'm even like if i'm fighting against the devil and the world's going to shit every day i'm doing what i can to spread some light and that's what my whole shit's about and where can they find you at um, Roman the Prophet. It's my website, RomanTheProphet.com. It's really some. Uh, it's like, uh, it's like some real amateur looking shit right now. I gotta get an official website made, but it's like Roman the Prophet. Spotify, Apple Music. I'm gonna shoot my first music video soon, so YouTube. Um, my Instagram is Roman the Prophet. Paint sneakers, splat by RTP. I don't know if you saw that shit. Yeah, I did. Yeah, you put up hashtag splat by RTP. Those are like my sneaker art, I guess you can call it. And um, yeah, you just uh, roam the prophet. That's my name. And you're a prophet too. Believe in your dreams, everybody. That's my whole thing. For sure. So this is Six Feet, or roam the prophet. And uh, everybody, believe in your dreams and have a blessed day. Have a blessed life. Life is a dream.